What's up, YouTube world? It has been a minute, a hot minute. Uh, about, I don't know, four or five, six years, something like that, since uh, I've graced the YouTube world with my presence. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's, it's been a while. Um, I uh, <clears throat> just kind of gave up the whole uh, playing thing, kind of swore off drums. Uh, Lost all interest in playing because, frankly, I was kind of pissed off uh, with just some stuff going on with stuff. <laughs> if you've been in a band before, uh, if you're a musician, you understand you spend all this money and you gig and you don't get any money and and you, you know, you get wrapped up in stuff. And <clears throat> anyway, uh, just got burned out. That's really... Uh, all that really boils down to is I just got burned out and I didn't want to do it anymore. <clears throat> Lots of things going on. Uh, and I was pissed. Uh, so I just, uh, I was just done. There's a couple times where I tried to get things back going, tried to relit the flame a little bit and, uh, just didn't help. Uh, I just, I was just done, just done. Um, but you know, as time moves on and wounds are healed and, and uh, you know, things change, you know, you never know. And that's where I'm at right now. Late last year, uh, I started getting a little, little fire going, I guess you could say, and got interested in playing. I think I've let all the, the demons out of the closet. Uh, I've, I've forgiven things and I've moved on. I've, I've, I've dealt with all that past crap and I, I miss, I miss the therapy that playing drums gives and gave me. Um, so I'm back. <clears throat> I'm back playing in my living room, <laughs> uh, because I don't actually have a dedicated room to jam in. My wife is amazing and let me make all kinds of noise. Uh, in our living room uh so bless her heart she is the most supportive woman ever so um <clears throat> so this whole video is me re reintroducing myself and showing you my new kit um i played a lot of kits over the years uh i've had a couple dw collector's kits were amazing in fact my last videos that i posted several years ago was my last kit that I owned, which was the DW Collectors. It's a beautiful kit. Um, I've also had Thomas Star Classics. I have videos of those. Um, the, the Thomas Star Classic, I actually took the wrap off and completely refinished. So the finish that you see on there is actually done by me, which I am extremely proud of. Um, that was a beautiful kit. It sounded awesome. The kick drum just was like a cannon. Um, and then I had some, I had a Pearl kit. I had a Yamaha kit. My first real kit was the Yamaha Stage Custom. Uh, when I was 13, actually, I guess you should say my, my first real kit was, which I wish I still had. Um, my dad brought it to me when I was 13 years old. It was a Pearl President uh, and like a, like a, like a Pearl, you know, the finishes they had back then. It was really cool. I have no idea what I did with it. Uh, I wish I still had it. It was a, that's where I, that's what started it all. Uh, anyway, uh, never owned a Gretsch, um, but, uh, getting back into drumming again, I decided I'm going to, I'm going to start fresh on something I've never played before. Um, and so I bought a new kit, as you can see in the title. Uh, and I am absolutely blown away absolutely blown away um well you already saw the title so the sonars uh they're holy moly man they're in a they're in a league all their own i i just uh for the price point on the kit i'm about to show you uh it's <laughs> it's crazy the quality that you get with this kit uh so without all you dw haters out there throwing <laughs> you know, dissing me bad. Uh, th this kit holds up to a DW collectors, in my opinion. I can't even imagine what uh, the SQ2 line is like. I got the AQ2, which is kind of just below it. 
kind of their interme intermediate line. <clears throat> and I'm floored. I just, I'm absolutely blown away, which you'll see. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, man, uh, it's, uh, I'm back. I, I have my first gig coming up on Memorial Day weekend. Uh, I'm not joining the band yet. I haven't joined them, but they're super cool guys. I'm filling in for this gig. Uh, we'll see how it goes. See if I'm into it. Uh, I'm not ready to, to really jump in any major commitments right now. Um, just because I want to test the waters and, and make sure I can actually even play still. Because <laughs> uh, it's been a while. Um, no, I'm kidding. I can, I can still play uh, a little. Anyway, I um, just want to make this little video and show you my new drums. Let you know I'm back at it. Uh, I don't know how many drum covers I'm going to make. Um, but uh, I didn't never really got a whole lot of views anyway. My dog's trying to get away. Hey, get over here. Uh, anyway, uh, <clears throat> but if you guys want to see some drum covers, let me know. I'd love to hear the comments. Uh, if you guys have any any ideas um, throughout this video, you guys want to throw a comment down there. I'd love to hear it, man. Um, any words of encouragement? Anything? I, I would I would love to hear it from you guys. Let you just you know. We gotta help each other out, man. We're a community, and uh, anything to encourage one another and help one another, and uh, that's what I'm all about. So, anyway, without rambling on anymore, uh, I hope you guys like my kit, um, and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Let's go in there and check them out. They're in my living room. <laughs> so here they are. They are the Sonars, and they are the AQ2 with the white marine pearl wrap. And I gotta tell you, man, <clears throat> these things, like I said, I played several different kinds of drums and these bad boys, they just sing super easy to tune and they are just amazing. They're, they're absolutely amazing. Such a huge bang for your buck on these things. Um, as of right now, best drums I've played. Hands down, I will not even argue. I know you DW guys out there are probably going to say you're an idiot. But I'm telling you, tune these suckers up, sit down and play them, and you're going to feel the same way. I'm not even kidding. And I'm about as picky as they come. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> the kit size, uh, it's a five-piece. Uh, came with a snare. I'm not using the 12-inch or the snare right now. Uh, in fact, actually, I'm trying to figure out how to add that 12 inch into the mix while still keeping my four piece set up. So I don't know, I put it over there or put it back back there or somewhere. So if you guys have an idea, throw it in the comments because I'd love to hear it because I'm kind of running out of ideas. Um, but I want to keep it as that kind of layout right there, um, single rack. Uh, so anyway, uh, so 14 by six and a half snare drum, uh, 10 by six and a half, uh, rack tom, 12 by eight second rack tom. Uh, the floor tom is a 14 by 13, which we'll go around and see that here in a minute. And then my favorite of all kick drum sizes, 20 by 16, that little sucker right there throttles shakes my entire house and i am not exaggerating that little kick drum pommels it is so nice uh so yeah that's the kit um just getting a little closer up to it i mean it's just it's so classy the mounting system is is just rad uh this actually goes in and out so you have even more positioning uh, options um <clears throat> it's got locks it's 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 just so, I mean, they sonar really, I would love to see what an SQ2 kit looks like. Cause I mean, this, I'm so impressed by this. I, I don't know what I, I don't know if I could handle a SQ2 cause those are their top of the line, amazing kits. Um, but anyway, this is like thick metal and it sits on rubber. So it never even touches the shell or anything. It's almost like it just floats. There's no pressure on the lugs or, or the hoops or anything which is super nice. <clears throat> I modified one of my DW stands so I could mount my ride. Uh, so that kind of worked out really nice. Um, I use all D 
DW hardware. Everything on here is DW. Um, uh, in fact, actually, this stand here is one I just got. Uh, this is actually a DW 3000. This is one of their newer stands. And I got to tell you, man, this thing is, um, it's awesome. And for $99, good luck finding one any better. This thing is so sick. It's such a nice stand. Uh, and it even has the uh, the handle. I mean, it comes just like you see. It's got a push button up here on the top. You can push it and pull this right off. It's just a, it's a, it's an awesome stand. Got the same top, got the secondary lock, got the handle, uh, two height adjustments. It's awesome. It even has numbers on the side right there uh, for easy setup. Really, really beefy. And then I have a 9,000 hi-hat stand. <clears throat> I have that 9,000 stand over there. Uh, with a dog bone on the side. I'll get a better angle when I go around. Puppy bone here with an arm. Uh, <clears throat> and then 9,000 hi-hat stand. Or, I mean, <laughs> snare stand. Uh, love that thing, beefcake. 9,000. I have a double pedal, but I only use a single right now. Um, and then some interesting fun stuff with the with the cymbals. Um Oh, my headphones, Vic first. These are pretty nice, but they really squeeze my head. Uh, anybody else have that problem with those? 13-inch uh, Paragon hats. Um, Neil Pert signature hats. Uh, this is a 13-inch version by Sabian. This is a Paragon Crash uh, that my son and I designed the holes and, and put the holes in the symbol. Um, so that's kind of our our little signature hole design, and I love it, and the symbol sounds amazing. I know I'm gonna get a whole bunch of backlash for poking holes in Neil Peart's signature symbol, but for me, I didn't totally like the sound, and poking holes in a symbol, I don't really know exactly what it does, but it sure makes the symbol sound a lot better. Um, so my son and I got our creative flow and, and uh, Drill out these holes and we love it. It's absolutely amazing. The symbol looks awesome. Um, so we're very happy with it. Uh, that's a 10 inch, uh, also Paragon, you know, per splash symbol. Uh, this little gem is uh, Wuhan's brand new line of Koi symbols. This is their 21 inch ride uh, with a raw bell. Absolutely love this symbol. It weighs a ton. Sounds amazing. I wish I didn't have just my stupid iPhone that I'm filming this with, uh, or I'd give you samples of all this stuff, but it's not gonna sound good through the phone, uh, so I'm not even gonna, not even gonna do it. Uh, but I, I absolutely promise you, it's, it's so nice. Great stick definition, awesome bell. Uh, you can crash it, it's got a nice washy crash to it. Um, it's, it's a fantastic symbol. Um, really, really great brand. I'm going to end up getting a couple crashes in that brand too. Uh, really cool. Um, over here, another custom ozoned, I guess you could call it crash that my son and I designed. Um, <clears throat> this is actually a stag, uh, crash. Uh, and it didn't sound bad actually. And I'm picky. I always played a customs and K's. So, um, I'm very picky with my sound. I kind of like dark, washy crashes that, you know, come off explosive and then decay real quick. And these, these both do that very, very well. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know what it does with poking holes in this thing, but, uh, it works. So that's what this is, a uh, 18 inch stag crash that we modified ourselves. And then the top is a Wuhan 8-inch bell. Uh, perfect for what I need. Uh, and it was only 50 bucks. So, not going to poke any holes in that. <laughs> uh, then everybody knows what kind of symbol that is. That's the good old Wuhan. Uh, this is a 14. And once again, we poked holes in it. Sounds so much better. A million times better. I don't know. Some of you have probably watched a lot of my videos. I have a video way back in the day um, where I 
actually turned to China and a crash into a Wuhan before they were even a thing, before <clears throat> drilling holes and symbols were even a thing, and got a lot of views on that. Um, but the first thing I ever drilled holes in was a Wuhan, China, and it totally changed the game for me. Um, I don't even like Wuhan, China's without holes in them, but as soon as you poke holes in them, it makes them come alive. It's just so nice. And again, I wish I could play you a demo. I would love to, but uh, it's not going to sound good through here, so I apologize for that. Um, anyway, uh, so that's my symbols. Uh, <clears throat> heads are Evans G2 coateds. Uh, snare is a HD dry with the vent holes. Uh, my favorite snare head. And then the Emon is my kick. 9,000 pedals. Uh, not really much else to say. Um, right now, I've been always, I've always used Buddy Rich sticks, but, uh, excuse me, I grabbed a pair of these, and they just absolutely felt fantastic in my hand. I don't know, they're a little longer too, so the link's a little bit longer, um, but they just feel great. However, uh, I just grabbed a pair of Danny Carey sticks, and holy crap. Those are, those are like a game changer. Um, so I'll be uh, getting a couple pairs of those and really putting those through the rigors and see, see which ones I like the most. And then I also have, uh, I have some of these, but I haven't really used them on anything else on this kit. Um, but these snare weights, uh, these things are sick. Uh, so nice, they look good, uh, they're discreet. You can get them in this size. And then the M80s, which are a little bit longer. I'll show you on my snare over there. I have it on that. Um, and you get them in white and black. So, uh, worth the money. Really, really cool. Uh, there's the dog bone. More DW stuff. Uh, oh, and then my snare. My main snare that I'm using is the... Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to limit its space. Uh, my snare... Smear. Oh my God, I can't talk. My snare, most of you probably know what this is, SLP by Tama, 13 by seven. Um, I actually have videos back in the day that I posted. I did a little drum solo thingy video um, that I have this in. Uh, this snare is a beast. I absolutely love this snare. You can do this any way you want to and it just says, yeah. It just, it loves it. Um, I crank him up a little bit. <clears throat> I crank up the bottom head quite a bit and then the top head uh, depending on what I'm playing normally is just a tad bit above like a medium and it just gives you that fat cracky pop and then if I'm playing more uh, I don't know more bluesy stuff or something I'll crank the top head up even more and get that really tight pop that just sounds awesome <clears throat> but the snare is fantastic uh, especially when you put a dry on dry head on uh from evans it's just a it's a match made in heaven really really awesome snare looks beautiful built like a tank uh, die cast hoops um really nice snare um and for the money it's it's pretty awesome um and i have a little have a little snare weight on that guy too um, just a little bit so uh so the snares that actually came with this kit are pretty awesome too this snare is beefy uh awesome hoops uh, not a bad throw off butt plates you know generic and basic but uh the lugs are awesome looking <clears throat> throw off is pretty cool uh real smooth nice adjustment uh i put some pure sounds on here haven't really done much with it because i wasn't gonna i'm not gonna probably use it all that much it sounds really good um I'm just not really into 14 inch snare drums, so. Uh, but yeah, a little closer look on that mounting hardware. It's sick looking. Not only does it look cool, it's pretty thick uh, and just just works. You can get in there and see this is laying on rubber. Pretty awesome. Uh, anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, that's my new baby sitting in my living room thanks to my wife. <laughs> Anyway, it's been awesome chatting with you guys. Thanks for checking out my video, especially if you made it this long. I know it's a long one. 
I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, comments, ideas, anything, I'd love a comment down there. Uh, other than that, we'll see you soon. Uh, thanks, guys. Peace out.